Today's episode of Pods Key Outdoors comes to you from the San Luis Valley, where we're only a few minutes from the town of Blanca, very close to Fort Garland and, and a larger town known as Alamosa. Now, what we're doing is we're trout fishing here at Smith Reservoir. It's a place that gets hit real hard by locals. It's also a place with primitive camping, so you see a lot of you know, uh, uh, RVs and trailers that come in here from other states stopping through and going fishing on their way to another destination. Already got one on there. There it is. <laughs> this is two casts in a row, man. What are you using? Garlic wildfire on this one with about a three and a half inch leader. I'm trying to get up above all the weeds and rocks out there. So I had to go with a pretty long leader to get it up above it. Man. Whoa. That sounds pretty good. Dang. This thing has some oh. weight to it. Real silvery fish. You got the net? Yeah. Look at this thing. <laughs> Luckily, I ran to get the net. <laughs> Another good one. Look at that fish. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here. All right. Better be careful. You keep getting big like that, <laughs> Uncle Rick gonna eat you. Man, look at that fish. Look at this nice rainbow here at Smith Reservoir outside of Alamosa. It's two casts in a row, two fish. Another one. This was only in for a couple of minutes, too. Whoa! These things have a little bigger than the last one. <laughs> oh, is it really? You got your net? Ooh, yes! Oh my gosh! It looks like the same fish. It looks like the They're same. They're all real silvery in here. Nice fish. Yeah, a little longer. Let me show you the setup that we've got over here. We're near a dam, a lot of rocks, a lot of vegetation in the water. So I had to set up just a little bit differently. All right, so I'm using a little heavier rod. It's a medium action spinning rod. I've got just your standard Shimano reel. And what I've done is actually my main line is eight pound line. I've got a quarter ounce egg sinker, but I put a bead on this thing to make sure I protect it as far as from the rocks underneath. I'm trying to make sure that knot doesn't get destroyed. Small barrel swivel onto fluorocarbon line, four pound fluoro. And the difference today is the length of the leader. I've got about four feet on this leader. So you can see it, I'm stretching out. It's still got a little left on it because I'm floating above the vegetation. If I run this too short, it's gonna be in the weeds the whole time. I'll never get a bite. So that's what I've done on that end. Here is the hook. I'm using a size 10 fire hook. Beefed up the size a little bit on my end. All right, so that's what I've done there. And then I'm putting a little bit larger amount of fire bait on this thing to get it above the weeds because it is very weedy in here and very snaggy in here too. So I want to make sure I'm able to bring this fish in if I do hook it. Hooked up again. Whoa, this one just got in the water again. Fire bait's doing the job again. Long leader, floating above the weed line of the rocks and another nice fish. There we go. I wonder if it's going to be all silver like the last one. Yeah, it looks like just the way the water clarity is here, but there's so much feed in here, it's wild. All right, now to get through the rocks here, try to land this thing. Give me a ready. There we go. Wow. Another nice fish. Look how fat these things are. Really nice trout. All right, two baits I was using today, garlic salmon egg and garlic wildfire. Of course, garlic and trout love garlic. So that's what I've been using today. Some of these hits I've gotten as soon as it's actually hit the water and started settling to the bottom, they would hit it as soon as it would go down. Other ones might take a few minutes, five or 10 minutes at the most. I would never even leave it any longer than 10 minutes at a time without checking it again because of all the weeds and vegetation in this lake. So I'll show you what I'm doing as far as on the fire bait. So this is garlic salmon egg and you can see I'm getting a little more than usual on this. So there's quite a bit there. But what I'm doing, it's covering the whole hook and I'm rolling it up and up the line and covering the hook completely. This actually gives me a chance to float it above the weeds, making sure I'm able to get in the strike zone for these trout and they have been hammering it. Whoa, got a little drag on this one. A little different area. Doing two rods and let's get this guy past this one. Did, man, this one has more weight to it, it feels like. Might be tying up two lines here. Gotta get through these rocks. Watch out for the tumbleweed. Ah, tumbleweed in the way. Got it. Fish in the basket. Oh, there we go. Look at that right on the nose, too. Damn. I don't fish often, but I'm just trying to help out here. And uh, my Panther Martin has caught the biggest trout of the day. Well, it's not in the net yet. Let me see that net, please. 
But this appears to be a beautiful that is garlic nice fire gel on a Panther Martin. And come here, come to daddy. Oh, whoa, son, welcome to Colorado. <laughs> we all know Chris doesn't like to touch fish. This is the big one he just caught, so guess what I get to do? I get to hold it for him. All right, so we wanna show you the quality of fish that are here. Now that's, you guys have all seen these size nets and it just shows you how big and thick these fish are. Uh, there's just a lot of food to be had here. Now the good news is, all these nice fish that we've caught today, we're putting them back in the water so you guys can come catch them. But it just shows you, you come out here in the San Luis Valley and there is some tremendous fishing available. Now, we've spent the last several days in the mountains above South Fork, and I think five fish that we caught would equal this one fish here, maybe 10. Uh, but it just shows you, this is an awesome fishery. Uh, if you can come out here, enjoy it because these fish are growing fast, they're fighting hard, and they just got some beautiful silver chrome colors. Changed up a little bit. Fire float with a tube with garlic fire gel. Nice one, nice one, a white tube. And there he goes. Down this side. Oh, we Dang, buddy. There we go. Oh, eventually. There we wow. go. Look at that tube right in its mouth. There it is, another good one. Don't mind that fish in the the fish in the water right there. That's Rick's dinner. He said he's gonna have trout and IPA tonight. Look at the tube right in his mouth. Nice. Nicely done. Fire gel does it again. Oh, Jesus. oh we got a tough one. <laughs> tube just came off. Oh. That's a nice fish. There we go. Rick, you still got it. <laughs> You've been That's sitting a down. sweet. That's <laughs> a sweet setup. <laughs> I like that. All right, let me show you the setup that I was using now after the fire bait bite slowed down a little bit. So we get a little aggressive and we're doing something a little different that you see, uh, usually don't see. So I'm, what I'm doing is using a casting bubble and a long leader to a tube. It's a prototype tube that you'll see eventually, but the key for us today was garlic fire gel. The scent on it, we got a lot of hits on the trail, a lot of hits, double hits on it and we'd set the hook, bring those fish in. So you saw a couple fish caught that way by myself and by Rick, but let me show you the setup. Here is the casting float with a uh, clear float is what it is. This is the type you can add water to add weight. So you can cast it even further, tied to a larger barrel swivel off the main line. The reason for that is so the barrel swivel will keep the actual casting float from getting stuck. So don't have to use a bead on it, just doing it that way set up. I've got a four pound fluorocarbon with a five foot leader. The leader is key also in this four pound fluorocarbon down to a prototype tube here. So what I'm doing is on this fire tube right here, you can see the length of it. I'm getting some garlic fire gel here. And what I'm doing on it is just dipping it in. So you can see right there, just drop it in. Just get a little bit on it is all you need to do. If you don't want to put too much, you'll get the tails won't work as well, but you just want to dip it in enough where you get a scent coming off it. Now we're real close to Great Sands National Park. And it's one of those places that the trout grow big and fast. Obviously, this is a fertile valley that's here. And people tell us that you get a lot of good growth rates here. Now, we did call the state of Colorado to get some input from the biologist, but didn't get calls back. Unfortunately, that's pretty common. We tried to relay the kind of growth rates that are here. What we can tell you is we spent five days up in the area above South Fork where we caught some really, really small trout. I'm talking nine, 10 inches. We didn't have any fish like that here. Most of the fish we caught here were anywhere from 12 to 16 inches and some up to several pounds, which shows you how quick these fish grow here. Now we are right now in the shadow of Blanca Peak. It's an incredible scenic view that you have here. It's about 7,700 feet or so. Now this lake was drained in 2009 when the dam was fixed, then they restocked it with trout. And obviously the trout are stocked here every single year. There is a lot more pressure than you believe at a lake like this. The first time we came here, we only saw about 10 people fishing. The second time we saw 25 or more fishing and that's just in the one or two hours that we spent here. Now, all of our fish today came on several different baits. They came on tubes that were coated in garlic fire gel as well as Panther Martins coated in fire gel. Now that's just what one or two were caught. The rest of them were caught on fire bait. As you can see, 
Joe talked a lot about the different flavors of fire bait we use today. They were all used on a size 10 hook with a quarter ounce weight. And remember, we fished right off the bottom. We didn't use any floats or anything like that. So come on down to beautiful Smith Reservoir. Bring your fire bait, a little bit of fire gel, and you too could have a great time bank fishing here in the greater San Luis Valley. Potsky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, make sure to go to potsky.com. And as a thank you for watching Potsky Outdoors, we're going to show you a coupon code to be used for 10% off your next order.